to Virtualize Everything, where we strive to inform and educate the viewer about technology and technology-related topics. Today's video is going to be about installing VBox in a Proxmox VM. If those of you do not know what VBox is, VBox is a vulnerable web application stored all pre-set up in a VM. It's meant for running normally in VBox, but with the use of a few commands that I'm going to show you today, we can use it on Proxmox easily. We're definitely going to have to pay attention to a few things when we configure our setup to make sure that this extremely vulnerable operating system used for penetration training and experimentation is not exposed to the outside world or creates extra vulnerabilities in our network. Let's get to seeing how to convert VBOX from a VMDK to a VDI. So we're going to first need to go to itsecgames.com, click on their download, and then click on download VBOX. That's going to bring us to SourceForge, and we can click on VBOX here, and it'll trigger the download. As you can see, I've already downloaded the file, so I'm not going to do it again. We can exit those screens out and unpack our VBOX image as I have done here. With our VBOX image unpacked, we can go ahead and run the command VBOX manage clone medium disk. Our first path here highlighted will be to our VMDK file that is found in our VBOX compression that we have unpacked. Our second file path here will be the file path we want for the stored VDI file. We're going to finish off the command with a dash dash format VDI. Now, if I was to run this command right now, which I will press enter, I am going to get an error message. This is due to the fact that I have already run this command on this VMDK file and it knows it and will not allow me to run it again. So here is the VDI file that I have created and we're now going to need to move it to our Proxmox server. To do that, I am going to run a SCP command. And if you saw the video earlier this week, you know about this command already. I'm pasting this command in from my notes, but the command we're going to use is SCP, the path to our VDI image. Then we're going to use root or our username at the address of our server dash the location or my location is home of where we would like to place the file. We can press enter, enter the command and it's going to begin uploading to the server. Now as you can see it's going to take a little bit of time to upload so we can go ahead and prep our Proxmox server. So at our Proxmox web interface that you see here, we can create a VM. We'll call this VBOX. You can call it whatever you like. Next, choose our image. Well, doesn't matter. We're not using it. Our system, our hard drive. Again, we'll just Place this here for a minute. We're actually going to delete it. Our cores, our memory, our network location. Now, I am changing this to VM Bridge 1. I have a second network adapter in this machine, and I place all 
vulnerable operating systems on this network adapter. This network adapter is connected to no systems on an outside network and essentially completely isolates all of these activities to a network port that has no connection to the outside world. You may find you need to do other steps like using Open vSwitch to achieve the same thing, but you want to make sure that your system and your vulnerable operating system is isolated from the internet, at least located behind a NAT so you are protected. Now we're going to press next and finish. Now with this Proxmox will make our VM. Now that our VM has been created we need to come over here, select the hard drive and detach it. To get there you click on your hardware tab for your virtual machine. So now our unused disk zero appears. Let's go ahead and remove it. Now that we are finished uploading our BBOX VDI to our Proxmox server, let's CD to our home folder, which I've already done, and run LS. We can see that BBOX VDI appears here. Now, in order to get our VDI file into our virtual machine, we need to run another command. QM import disk our virtual machine number or 107 in this case, our location of our file and where we want it to be imported to or our local LVM. Press enter and we're going to upload this file. It'll take a minute or so and I have found in doing this before that there are a few random stops where it appears to almost hang. Go get a coffee and come back in a few minutes. Now, when we return to our command prompt, we will know this is finished. It usually takes a couple of seconds to half a minute for this to happen after we see the double 100%. So, I had to go ahead and click off the hardware in order for it to successfully finish. Now that we can click back on hardware and we see this unused disk zero, we need to click edit and this is going to let us add the unused disk back. I select SATA but I really don't know if you need to. Click add and it shows up as a hard drive. Now, because we deleted the other hard drive, we need to go here to boot order, click edit, and move the hard drive to the top booting location and click OK. Now at this point, BBOX is ready to run. Press start, we can open the console. And here you go, here is BBOX up and running in a Proxmox virtualization server. I hope you enjoyed tonight's presentation on installing BBOX in a Proxmox VM. If you would like to support Virtualize Everything in making more educational videos like this one, please like, share, and subscribe. As always, 
Have a good night.